people really, I think, have to realize that money in our current form uh, is is debt. There's every dollar in existence has an equal portion of debt behind it, and so we call that a debt-based monetary system. And a debt-based monetary system requires inflation. So, so for a lot of times, that, that's kind of confusing for people to grok immediately. So I, I try and explain it like this. You have this battle that happens between deflation and inflation. And we're going we're gonna to just talk about this from the perspective of money. So deflation in money means that the prices of things are going down or the purchasing power of money is going up. So you can think of that that dollar buying more every year yeah. is deflationary. So if in in the natural world in the in a free market where people are competing to produce goods and services, they're constantly driving the price of goods down and that's a deflationary force. So a lot of times people think they hear the word deflation and it has a negative connotation because of the incorrect financial education they received growing up. Deflation should really be looked at as a positive for you as a consumer, as a positive for you uh, as a human here on this planet. The cost of things going down is a benefit for human flourishing, right? So, so we want to see deflationary forces actively imparting themselves in our economy. Where it becomes a problem is in a debt-based monetary system. So, so we have this natural thing occurring, this natural free market force that wants to make prices lower and lower and lower. And we have this artificial monetary system, a debt-based monetary system, where we have this central authority that can create money out of thin air by issuing a debt. And if you have, if, if you imagine you borrow a hundred dollars and you've got to repay that and you take that hundred dollars and you build a business and you're out here operating your business and you're competing in the world to try and, and win at whatever uh, business operation you're, you're running. Well, through that competitive force, it's becoming harder and harder and harder and harder to pay off this debt that has a dollar amount attached to it that's not going away, in fact, is growing because of the interest rate that's applied to it, but it's getting harder and harder and harder for you to make that payment because of deflationary forces, right? So, so what happens is in order for this central authority that issued the money by this debt, in order for them to extract their commission, extract their fee, earn their interest, they have the authority to create new monetary units. They create inflation. When you're adding money to the system, you're making these prices that naturally want to go down rise. So you create yeah. price inflation by creating new monetary units. Now, if they create price inflation, even though it might be getting more and more competitive over here and you want to you're in an effort to deliver your product and service at a cheaper price so you can gain more market share. They're creating inflation that's making the input costs to your production go up, 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 up. So, so for them, it's good because they can extract their interest. They can extract wealth out of this battle that we mostly unknowingly are fighting with each other all the time. Yeah. And, and, and so when you start, you start to look around, and you start to talk about you hear you hear Bitcoiners talking about central banks being this extractor of wealth, this tax on the system. That's really what they're talking about. It's like it's like we're you have this debt over here and we're the hamster on the wheel running all the time desperately to pay down this debt while we're just feeding units of energy and extraction out of our life to that central bank. So. So that, that's the way the money works. That, that's, we haven't got, even got into debt spiral or anything like that. Yeah. But if you, if you don't understand that core, it's really hard to, to understand how did we get where we are today. 
Yeah. So um, maybe we, to add to that, like, yeah, because I don't have a finance or economics background, which I think actually helps me <laughs> because when I hear economists talk about, no, 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 deflation is bad. Like if the price is yeah. going down, people are not going to spend their money anymore. Right? right. And I'm just thinking like, no, I, I think of it like this, as you said, we are becoming more and more efficient over time, right? That is the that is the 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 battle in the market is who can create a better product at a lower price, right. and that that is the competition at play, right? I think, in my perception, that is also pure capitalism, right? Like we are in a free market trying to figure out who has the best product for the most attractive, let's call it attractive price, most fair price for the for the people buying it, right? But as you said, if the input goes up forcibly, then then you are kind of stalled in that innovation, in that in that progress. And I usually uh, try to use the example of you know a bread was twenty five cents in the nineteen sixties, and now it's four dollars. Can you guess which side is winning? Right. It, right. It, it's it's. I, I always think, and I get some slack for this sometimes, but the bread should almost be free. Like everyone should right. have like a super cheap bread maker or something in their kitchen, you know, and have like super cheap bread. But that's not that's not where we're at. And so I think mm -hmm. that is that is um, one interpretation or illustration of how these two forces work with each other. Because in history, you, you've seen that every progression yeah. was kind of like, you know, the we have more energy output with less energy input, right? Like, so we went from people to horses to, to tractors to trains and, and all these things. So it was always like a condensing of energy. But in some way now, we have totally lost this yeah, speed of innovation almost. I, I agree. And I, I think you said an important thing. You said not having that TradFi background helps you see this. I think that's 100% true. So many uh, smart people in TradFi are simply stuck in their debt-based monetary box. They don't think, or they've never even thought there's any other way to perform these functions. Hmm. And so if, if you're stuck in that box, then deflation to you is negative because it means corporations, you have to countries pay. <laughs> are gonna default on the debt. And if we default yeah. on the debt, we're going to get a massive spike in the dollar and it's going to shut down economic activity. So, so they're right, but they're not right the way Bitcoiners think about it because Bitcoiners are thinking about it in terms of how do we produce hum human flourishing? How do we do it in a manner that's fair, equal, and equitable for everybody on the planet? And so if, you're, if you come to this monetary discussion with that question, uh, the debt-based monetary system immediately looks extractive. It looks like tax. It looks like a Ponzi scheme, it, right? It, it looks like corruption. It looks like bribery. All these things that we know intuitively by referencing natural law are bad for humanity. And so then we step out of that box with an open mind and say, what are the alternatives? And, th and the first thing you do is you, is you go to gold. Right. And you start to say, OK, let's go back in history. Let's look at gold and let's see how gold impacted society, how how that gold system worked. And then what what flaws happened through the papering of gold, through the rehypothecation of gold. And then you find Bitcoin and you're like, holy smokes. Right. And this is where the light switch goes off. And I mean, Bram, I've uh, I have been the Bitcoin water cooler guy in TradFi for the last seven years, knocking people over the head with this thing, and they refuse to listen. And even the ones that do get it, they, they kind of will, will get it and say like, y yeah, 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 but it doesn't work in this system, right? They can't, they can't, yeah. they can't make that journey to, to, well, let's build the future. Let's build something new. Let's build an alternative there. You know, and, and I think that's just uh, the vast majority of people in traditional finance are riding a desk to extract their share of fiat to go live their life. 
they don't benefit by by disrupting the system. They don't benefit by by choosing an alternative path. And as soon as I did that, I I was the squeaky wheel. I was the the guy who was constantly causing problems, the guy they were afraid of, the guy they had to question. Right. And it just it slowly got me to the point where it's okay, well you're 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 you have two choices. You either shut up or get out. Right. So mm. uh I'm out. <laughs>